One of the biggest The Isle dev blogs just released, with dinosaurs, new AI, human structures, and so much more. So, without further ado, let's just see what it's all about. Starting off with the dinosaurs, we've got Myasaura, and this was shown off further with heaps of animations shown off the back end of the latest dev blog. Now, truthfully, I don't know the exact animations and what these are representing, so some of these I could be wildly off, the same with Triceratops. However, that's the pre-warning, let's dive into them. The first one seems to be like a sprint stop animation, shown where it digs its heels into the ground, kind of drifts ever so slightly as well. The second one seems to either be a eating or pick up animation. This is basically if you're picking up something that's basically right on head level. They also showcase this for other different height variations, which I'll showcase in a moment. The sitting to sleeping animation comes in next, showing the fluidity from standing to sitting to sleeping and then back up again. Showcases a full loop of this animation, which is very, very nice. Then this one, which I think is either falling and landing or a slam attack. Either way, it's important to note that this is showcased on the baby by the looks of it. So uh, this could be a specific baby animation. The next is similar to the second animation that I showcased. I did say I'd be coming back to this. This is a reaching pick up or eat animation, likely a grab or pick up for, you know, if you're reaching higher plants. Then you've got one where it's stuff on the ground as well. So like the picking up or eating stuff that are on the ground, lower objects. Once again, a large array of animations here, showcasing the development progress for the Myasaura. What do you think about all of these? Triceratops gets four animations shown off, two of which were actually not shown in the dev blog. However, I don't really know what they are and I don't know what the other animations are. The first one is a nesting related animation, which showcases it moving its head along each side of the nest. This was actually explained if you freeze the very last frame, it says what it is, a nesting animation. This next one I think is a sidestep. I'm actually not too sure what it's for. It could be booking, it could be something like that. It could be just a sidestep. And then these two, they're very similar and they seem to be showcasing what I assumed was pinned and when you're pinned down the animation for that. Although it could be something completely different. Either way, they're great animations. And let me know what you think there in the comments down below. Probably you guys know more about it than I do. So yeah, if you want to name them, let me know. However, Kiss and Kin did also mention that Myasaurus, Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops are moving along nicely in their development. So perhaps now that we have previews of the latter two, we can maybe start seeing animation previews for that of Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> New AI is coming to the Isle of Rima, and one of which is one that I'm sure you will all be very excited for. Firstly, the more boring ones, these are showcased by Brian, and these are pretty cool nevertheless. You're going to be getting crabs, rats, as well as insects and lizards as well in the future. However, there is another dinosaur AI coming to the game, and this is Psittacosaurus. Yes, Psittacosaurus, the taco, is coming in as an AI before it's coming in as a playable, which is quite sad. I know a lot of you taco players from back in the day in legacy days are like, why are you vermin? Bring back my taco. However, it's being brought back as an AI. That being said, it does showcase that it looks like you'll be able to borrow as well, which is great. And Kiss and Kitten also added these comments about AI as well. This is what she said. There's a variety of different AI types we'll be working on to assist in fleshing out the ecosystem. The ball got a tiny spot of love. The chickens did too. They should be easier to spot and chase now. We're also bringing back some golden oldies like the Psittacosaurus, but we're also adding rats, varying crab types, insects, clams, etc which you'll be able to find out in the world and fill a niche that's been needed for smaller animals do keep in mind that some may only be detectable based on your species and size massive human structures have been showcased as well cranes that are coming to the dockyards were shown off by visual tech and these are a sight to behold they are very very well made these are very large they're as large as a location pretty much and these will be fully traversable plan to be absolutely massive objects located in the dockyards on the map they also showcase smaller cranes as well which will be populating the dockyards as well these will be notably smaller than the ones previously shown however they will also be fully traversable like the bigger ones 
The new camera system was mentioned in the dev vlog, however, this was also tied to a dev stream, which is where all the news about this one came out. And I do recommend these YouTube videos that you should check out. For example, Send Studio Animation showcased the stream and clips from it, Xzagua made an awesome in-depth discussion of the new system, and Safia Saratsaurus, the Yayo News channel, also had showcased a discussion of this new system by Dondi, which was a stream clip, and I definitely recommend you check out all of them to get the full glimpse and discussion of this new system. Basically, I would check them out if you want a more in-depth look, however, they did mention this stuff. The current third-person camera is likened to that of a UAV. To the developers, it's good, but to the developers, they think it is also troubling because you can basically see too far out with no drawbacks at all. The new cameras were shown off with the new min-max positions and basically explained here to be essentially each different direction will have the different camera positions. The camera overall is a lot tighter to the body of the dinosaur, almost like a pseudo first person, like a second person, so to say, because it's not third person. It's not first person. It's basically like a really small version of third person, but it sucks all the benefits that third person had out of it. So now it essentially means you're perpetually tunnel visioning. Let me know what you think about this. It's an interesting one. It's definitely divided opinions. I'm not a big fan of it. I think giving the option to allow people to do the camera closer to the body or, you know, how it was before is probably better. However, I kind of understand this is probably where the developers want to go here. Although, that being said, not really something I'm a fan of. And let me know what you think about it too. And finally, there are other stuff that were highlighted in the dev blog. These were mutations, Ceratosaurus manual vomit and miscellaneous stuff. So what did this entail? For the mutations, these were talked about at length actually compared to the other stuff. Mutations are currently in QA testing, we knew that. They have a large pool access to a bunch of different mutations. However, the devs did identify some issues with the current selection, mainly that they're too weak to justify selection because they want to ensure that these choices are good enough and good, so to say, especially because these will be locked from selection once chosen. Once chosen, So once you pick a mutation, you won't be able to pick another mutation. The aim is to create a way to define your character and your playstyle better, highlighting potential scenarios of nighttime hunting, herd leading, cannibalism, and much more. So these mutations will be able to allow you to spec into that stuff. <laughs> Now for Ceratosaurus Manual Vomit, another new feature that has been brought to the QA test. This is Ceratosaurus Manual Vomiting, and this will allow you to vomit on a corpse to allow it to decompose faster, adding a new way to, you know, a new adding to the identity of Ceratosaurus overall. They are also toying with the idea to increase Ceratosaurus buffs around corpses too, which is going to be pretty neat. And then finally for miscellaneous stuff, this is basically what it is. Dilophosaurus hallucinations work on AI characters as well as other players. They're reintroducing up, down attacks for Omniraptor and Truodon, and dawn and dusk times have been adjusted, so there will be longer days and shorter nights, but this doesn't increase day speed. And that's it, everybody. Let me know what you think about this The Isle dev blog. If you want to check out my previous The Isle dev blog, here it is on the screen here. But if you want to check out another unrelated video, I recommend you check out the Path of Titans dev blog that came out recently and see how it stacks up. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you are new, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.